Welcome to Pier Town. Population, well, technically eight. This is the water's edge at the Pittsburgh Zoo, located directly below the PPG Aquarium. It was completed in the summer of 2007, cost $12.5 million, and despite it offering the most thrills, it's actually one of the smaller regions in the entire zoo. Though it may not be the best in quality, I can easily say that it is the most well-themed. It's based on an Alaskan town to serve the environmental message to help the public learn how humans can better exist with these animals. In this case, four of some of the most charismatic marine mammals in the entire world that are adapted to extremely cold climates. You will not be as entertained or inspired like the rest of the place as you are here. Let's begin. Though you can see the first exhibit without going through it, to get to the main destination you must first go through a small boreal forest. The short pathway winds past artifacts, warning signs, animal tracks in the mud, and even a bear trap. When you arrive, you'll notice that the main viewing area is disguised as a dock or a fishing pier with detailed facades of a cannery, a seafood market, and a bait and tackle shop. The first exhibit is essentially the main event. At first, I didn't want to reveal what was in it, but then this guy showed up as a surprise and I had to include the shot. This is the 4500 square foot polar bear exhibit. It's sloped down and can actually be viewed outside of the water's edge main entrance from the top and side angles. On the pier, you can just get a glimpse of their underwater viewing, so I want to move on, but you will definitely see them again in the best way. In the middle of the dock are two identical exhibits that are technically combined as one through an underwater port. You'll find the incredibly energetic northern sea otters, Mashik and Alki. You'll notice that there is barely any land. Well, that's because sea otters are the only or one of the only semi-aquatic mammals that can spend their entire lives in the water, even when they give birth. Though they don't quite look like it, they are the world's heaviest otter weighing up to 100 pounds and could grow up to nearly 5 feet. At the time of the water's edges opening, it was the first time they ever displayed this animal. Moving on, but we will also see them again. The last habitat of the water's edge is the Sand Harbor Bay. It may not be the largest of the three, but it does appropriately have the most water space. I'll say for now it was meant to display walruses, but they never ended up at the zoo. So I want you to stay for the finale that reveals that this contains one of the rarest animals you'll see in a zoo. Because we're going beneath the deck to the journey below the sea, where we will come across the same exhibits in the same order, but in unimaginable ways. So if you couldn't tell by now, this is the Polar Bear Underwater Tunnel, one of I want to say five zoos around the world that allows polar bears to swim above and around you on each side. The tunnel is 30 feet long. It places you within a 167,000 gallon saltwater pool that's always chilled to at most 50 degrees. The section was actually built first and completed a year before the rest. For the bears to be a part of the water's edge is special not just because they have an electrifying viewing area, but because it marked their return to the Pittsburgh Zoo after missing since 1997. You can get nose to nose with their male coda and their smaller female snowflake. In my opinion, without a doubt, this is the greatest place to be in the entire zoo. If only Detroit's bears were this cooperative. The middle section is actually an event room, but the centerpiece is the underwater viewing for the sea otters. They're capable of diving down to 300 feet below the surface and can hold their breath for five minutes. In the wild, the ocean floor is usually where they find their food. Whichever way you enter, the water's edge ends with the bang. Two underwater viewings down, one more to go. This time, you're under 275,000 gallons of salt water in a longer 43-foot tunnel. On this visit, a pair of California sea lions were swimming in every direction the entire day. Which it took me too long to realize that this means the St. Louis Zoo no longer has the country's only pinniped underwater tunnel. In fact, Pittsburgh was meant to hold that title first. 
Like I said, this was built for walruses in 2007, but what ended up replacing them? Believe it or not, several sand tiger sharks took up this pool, a very rare occurrence when a shark tank is placed outside. But I mentioned today, this now displays a very rare zoo animal. Is it the sea lions? Nope. It's Coolio and Ellie Mae, the rescued northern elephant seals. I didn't see them both on my 2019 visit, but I did see Coolio in 2017, so I'll focus on his story. I've been holding on to this video for a long time, and unfortunately I can't edit out the subtitles anymore. Anyways, Coolio was found as a baby in the wild and was 100 pounds lighter than what he should have been. He sustained trauma to both eyes, he lost all vision in his left eye, but fortunately can still see with his right. He was first brought to the North Coast Marine Mammal Center and was soon deemed unreleasable. In 2014, actually, he found a new home in Pittsburgh, but was not actually placed on display until 2017. His tank mate Ellie May too was rescued for eye complications. So what makes them so special? They are the only northern elephant seals in a zoo or aquarium on display in the United States. And that completes this episode of the Pittsburgh Zoo's Water's Edge. We'll be back here in a few months and I'll show you what many zoo critics say to be the country's greatest aquarium in a zoo. Before you leave, I want you to go to my community post where you can vote on what the next episode will be. As always, thank you for watching Zoo Tours.